Good morning, everyone. Just want to recap the week, the upcoming week. It's all been explained in the schedule. The assignments are explained in the policy statement. But I want to give you just a verbal, uh, my thoughts about what you should be working on, how to approach the assignments. So for the next two weeks, you are pretty much going to be focusing on two things. One, citations and documentation, or finding your sources. So you, for today, you completed your finding information, finding and evaluating information packet um, that is through the U of H library. For next Monday, you have to submit an annotated bibliography. And as you're finding your sources, make sure you know what the annotated bibliography is asking for, because it's not just a summary of the, the works. I don't want you to summarize the whole thing. I want to know three things that should be in your annotated bibliography. So your annotated bibliography should be the complete citation okay, in the system used by your major. We've talked about that. If you are a mechanical engineering major, you should be using the ASME citation system. So give the complete citation for whatever source you think you're going to use, and then three bullets, where you found the source. Did you find it through uh, Academic Search Complete? Did you find it through Science Direct? Did you find it through uh, Google Scholar? So put the where you found it, and then I want the search terms you use, so the actual terms, what you typed into the box, because I want to know how you're finding your information. And then I want to know how you're going to use the source. Like, are you going to use the information about XYZ in your background? Or are you going to take the information from a section to use for as what well in one of your criteria discussions? I want to know how you're going to use it. Try to be specific there, but it doesn't have to be more than one sentence. Okay, just one sentence. So that's in, uh, finding information and the anti-bibliography, which is due next week. Now for, I'm, I'm also in the process of creating a video, it should be posted by Friday of this week, that will explain how you know when you cite. So how do you take uh, the information that you've used when you use it in your document? How do you know how to cite it? So I'll be posting that video hopefully by Friday. So besides finding sources, you should also be working on the introduction to your recommendation report. You've already submitted the letter of intent. I know what your topics are. I gave you a little bit of feedback on that. So now you want to start actually crafting the report. You've got two, two sections due in the new, next two weeks. The purpose and the scope. For the purpose, that can really just be one sentence. The purpose of this report is to recommend blah, blah, blah. That's it. And a purpose section often starts off with the purpose. Now, in the journal articles you read, you notice those introductions didn't really say it that way. We're trying to make it more formal. We're giving a specific section at the very beginning that states the purpose. Journal articles always state the purpose. They just may not call it. Purpose, and it may not say the purpose of this document is to. I think it's a good idea to start off doing that. Okay, what I mean is when you're first starting writing technical reports. So you're going to write the purpose. One sentence, it could be two or three if you wanted to, but really one sentence is enough. The scope section, which is the next that I'm asking you to write, uh, contains at least two statements. It's going to have an only statement, and this should discuss the criteria. So what are the criteria you're going to talk about in the report? How are you evaluating the subject that you just mentioned in the purpose statement? So you say your purpose, the subject you're evaluating, or the two choices you're evaluating, and then when it comes to the scope section, you describe the criteria that you're evaluating those subjects on. So. In that scope section, the only statement can say something such as, this report will only evaluate X and Y based on the criteria of A, B, and C. So besides an only statement, it should contain a not statement. Because you may state only what it will cover, but I may think, wait, are you also going to talk about the production of um, lithium? 
for these electric cars? That's important too. Are you going to talk about that? And you need to anticipate what your reader may think you're going to talk about and state that you will not talk about it. So you say, I will only discuss A, B, and C. I will not discuss X, Y, and Z. Or if there's only one thing, that's fine. If there's only one thing you think your reader may expect. So the scope section should contain an only statement and a not statement. Okay, so the only statement defines the criteria. The not statement says, you may think I'm going to discuss this other criteria or this other topic, and I'm not going to. Okay, so first, uh, this week you're going to be finding sources. Second, you're going to be working on the introduction to report. The following week, you're actually going to submit your background or problem. I don't care how you think about it. And I also don't really care where it comes. It normally comes after the purpose section before the scope. This section should explain what we need to know to understand either the importance of your topic or the background technical information. So for instance, if, if you're going to talk about hydrogen and electric vehicles, the background could explain how those vehicles work. So hydrogen vehicles work by doing this. You can describe how the engines work, how the hydrogen is produced. For electric vehicles, you, you could discuss how the, uh, how the electric motors work. Uh, even the regenerative braking for either one of them. So the in that case, it's background. If you wanted to discuss the importance of having carbon neutral forms of transportation or non-polluting forms of transportation, then that would be a problem. So you would describe uh, the climate change and how we're trying to reduce our use of fossil fuels in order to limit damage to the environment. And that will lead us into why your topic is important. And it could do both. It could have a problem section, you know, the dangers of climate change and the need for alternative fuels and how hydrogen vehicles work and how electric vehicles work. And that would all be background before we get to your criteria. Okay? Now, uh, couple other things. First, um, make sure you know that the Writing Center is available for appointments. The Writing Center is on campus and you, uh, normal, during a normal semester, you'd be able to make an appointment and go to the Writing Center, which is in CBB, but this semester it's all virtual. So if you want to make an appointment, it would be a 30 minute appointment, you can go to uh.edu slash WriteSend and make an appointment. Uh, and if you want to take a draft of any part of your recommendation report, you're welcome to do that. And you could take just a, your background section, for example, and your background may be three pages. You could take that. Uh, and they would read it and then give you feedback on it and walk you through it. You're also able to ask questions. So if you wanted to ask, hey, um, I don't know what I'm supposed to include in this part. Can you help me with that? Or you can say, I, my teacher keeps telling me I have a problem with comma splices. Can you help me figure out where I'm making those mistakes? So uh, make sure you know that the Writing Center is available. It's uh.edu slash WriteSend. Or you can just Google UH Writing Center. It'll come up. Also, next week, you've got Response Journal to do. Find a source. Uh, find a news article, recent news article, that could pose an ethical problem for engineers or for science and discuss it using the code of ethics um, and discuss whether the, they broke or upheld any part of the code of ethics. So this builds on the code of ethics assignment. And that is an essay, you should have a thesis with reasons, evidence. All right. I think that's it. So be expecting a couple more videos this week on citations and then one either this week or next week on abstracts.